How are you all? Good? It's quiet? How was Matua, Matua Ihaka and Pai Marama? Did you learn your waiata? Yeah. Was it a good waiata? Yeah. Nice, eh? Hey. How's um, Matua Ihaka as a teacher? Is he alright? He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Ka For uh, Caleb Te Kōtiri Kūti a tōku ingoa, he would be a hono ngāti koro me ngāti konohi, uh, so kia ora everybody, my name is Caleb, I'm one of the workers here at the Marae. Uh, I hail from the East Coast, so my mother is from Tiki Tiki and Rotoria, and my dad's from a place called Whangara. Has anyone seen Whale Rider, the movie? Oh, nice. Well, where, that, where Whale Rider was directed, that's where my dad's from, Whangara. Quite talks about our, our tipuna, Waikia. So, today I'm here to talk to you about a few of our taonga. Taonga puoro, our instruments, and our taonga maupapai, our fighting weapons. Does anyone know what taonga means? Or what a taonga is? Mm. Anyone? Is it a type of weapon? No. Right. Taonga, that means something precious. Precious. Kapai. Puoro is another word for instrument. So, what do you think taonga puoro means? A precious instrument. And the first of our instruments is this one here. This is called a pukaya. So, repeat after me pukaya. Yeah. Our other class had a bit of trouble remembering these, so you see if you can remember all of them. Right? So, Pukaya. Pukaya. Oh boy. This is a war trumpet. So back in the days when we had a big pass site that used to be on our moment, we had these big palisades or these big gateways. And in each gateway, there were all these watchtowers. Up on the watchtower, there'd be a towa or a warrior who would have either his patu or his taiaha some of these or one of these all right whenever he would see manuhiri in the distance he would do this which means they look all good let's get the kapahaka ready because we've got some guests to to look after if it sounded like this sharp sound, what do you think that meant? Why well, it meant battle. We've got a toa party or a group of people wielding a lot of these. They don't look very nice, so make sure all of our komatua and all of our tamariki and wahine are protected in the whare. We need to bring out our toa party to meet them. So, kukaya. Kukaya. This is a kukaya as well. Except it's made of a different wood, it's carved a little bit differently, or a bit more ornately, and it sounds a little bit different too. It's got a bit of a deeper, a deeper voice. This one was carved to depict a tohora. Does anyone know what a tohora might be? It's a big giant mammal that lives in the ocean. A whale. A whale. We've got two of them. This one here and another one that sits in the whare. The one that I blew this morning, that's to depict a, a tohora. So we commissioned a, a whakairo artist or a Māori carver uh, in Thames. He created two pūkaira for us that represented whales. Because we, Te Taua Moana, are the warriors of the sea, it made sense that we had uh, our tongue represent uh, the things that live in the ocean. So again, Kukaya. This one here, Pu Moana. Repeat after me. Pu Moana. 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 P
So all of our taonga puoro had an atua or a god that's attached to them. All of these ones that are made of wood come from Tane, Tane Mahuta. Does anyone know who Tane Mahuta is? God of the forest. Who do you think this one belongs to? God of sea. Yep, who's the God of the sea? Tangaroa. Tangaroa. Tangaroa sounds like this. <laughs> So this one had to be pretty loud because most of our Fano all migrated from Hawaii, from all of the islands. So we had these plentiful. But when we were coming into the into the harbour, we needed something loud to announce that we're here. So that's why we use this one. Umoana. So all of my Fano along the east coast, we use mostly all of these because that's what was plentiful for us. So again, Ukaya, Umoana, this one, Putatara, 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 Putatara. A Putatara is when you mix a Pumoana and a Pukaya together. Right? Tane and Tangaroa together make a Putatara. There's a story with that. Way back in the day when Rangi and Papa were separated, all of the siblings were fighting. They always fought. The other ones that, the ones who fought the most was Tani and Tongaroa. Papa Tūnuku didn't like seeing her two sons fight one another, so she decided to create a taonga as a kind of like a peace treaty between them both to show that when they work together, they can create beautiful things. And this here is called pinga. Pinga. So if you air to stand up. If you look on the coastline there, and you see that spiky grass, yeah. that's called pinga. In a hole. So the pinga only grows on the coastline, and that's what binds Tangaroa and Tane together. All right. So that's why. Tatara binded with being up. And this one sounds like this. It also has another running or another voice. So that second one. It's the sound of Tane, the first one, is the sound of Tangaroa. So that one's unique because it's got two voices. So again, Putatara, Kaya, Wan. Does anyone know what this is? Starts with P. Purere <laughs> hua. Like the Waiata. Purere hua. That's why it talks about the butterfly. That's what this one does. Should we go out and see if it'll sing for you? Yeah. Come on, Nick. It does. Right here. Remember when I said all of our taonga puoro are attached to an atua? So the shells are attached to tangaroa, the kaya are attached to tane. Who do you think this one's attached to or belongs to? I forgot the name. Hi, Safari Matia, who is the god of God of Wind. So let's hope Tafari. Up 
sound like a butterfly but it's supposed to mimic the vibration oh. the vibration mm. okay. now our tipuna were very in tune with vibration so this one here was usually used when you're reciting karakia so if you had a toa party or warrior party we're out getting ready for battle sometimes you would have someone playing one of these while the tohunga was going around Blessing all the warriors, preparing you for battle. So what this would do, would stir up the wairua. Do you not know what wairua is? Hey, Close, eh? Hey. Hey. No. Yeah, sort of. It's like energy. So this would stir up all that energy. And when the tohunga would come and do his karakia, do his thing, the, the pūrerehua and all those vibrations would stir it up and make sure it goes to all the right places so that you're ready for battle. Is it energy and courage? Yeah, yeah, energy, courage, way to us all the, all the spiritual stuff around us. Why? So? Pūkaya. Pūkaya. We'll know this one. Tata. And this one? Who did it? Who did it? Who does this belong to? Tani Mahuta. What about this one? Which is Tamaroa. And this one? Tafiri Mahatia. Tafai. All right. So remember how I said all of our atua have a, have a realm or have a taonga associated to them? Now we move into Tuma Tauinga. Who's Tuma Tauinga? The God of War. But there's also another atua who stands on the same level as Tuma Tauinga. And his name is Rongo. His in I, the God of Peace. So we always have balance there. Right? Does anyone know what this is? No. A spear, yeah. No. It's called a tayaha. 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 So a tayaha was one of the main weapons that our tipuna used for battle. Right? This was used to fight. And it's made up of a few different components. Here we have the arero. Arero. What do you think the arero is? No. No. Have a look at it. What's this part? The tongue. Arero is tongue. Waha. Mouth. Karu. Upoko. Awe awe. Tinana. Body. What do you think? What do you think? Ate is? No. Think of a sword. What does a sword have? A blade. So we have two. We have two ate on one side, one on the other, and then the butt end is called the row. The row. Yeah, like the feet. The row. There's a few rules or a few tikanga around wielding a toyaha. One of the main ones, the arero, never goes into the ground. You don't stab it into Papa Tuanuku. Why do you think that is? Oh. 
Oh. We'll save our Christians for the end. Um, if we're willing to blast, I will make the spear dirty. Yeah, it's a very practical answer. Got it. It's something with the earth and um, the water that's on the top of it. Yep, yep, one more. It would like, I don't know how to say it, but like, if it goes into the ground, it would like make, like, make the peaceful, like, earth of it turn into complete water. Yeah, can't buy, can't buy. That's, that's pretty much the same, the, 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 the right wording. So, with war or battle or anything bad, it's always because someone said something bad to someone else. Alright? So that means that all of that stems from the tongue. So when you put that into Papatuanuku, you're kind of yeah, disrespecting her and saying that all of these bad things that I say with my tongue now go into Papatuanuku. You have just no respect for where you are and the land that, you, that you're on. So in some cases, you would get Manuhiri who would turn up nice and peaceful, they look okay, and then all of a sudden, someone pulls out one of these, stabs it into the ground, which means they're here, they're not here to, to be nice. Right? That's very rarely you see that now, but that was one of the tikanga that our tikanga used to follow back way back in the day. So don't put the arero into the ground. Another rule is that you don't eat kai with it. These are mo fafai, fighting weapons. So they go to battle, which means they do some pretty nasty things. So you wouldn't want to have all of that modi from the battle seep into your kai, which then you put into your body, make you sick. All right? The other thing too is our taonga, well, mo fafai, we're all, they're all tapu. Does anyone know what tapu means? Close. Closer. <laughs> sacred. Right? So all of our all of our mofafai were all sacred. <coughs> Whenever you had Kai, you've got this. We're always on this thing on a scale, right? We have Tapu on one side and Noah on the other side. Noah is like normal or to balance. So whenever we do any of our mahi, you go out and do porfiri go out and do fighting, your tapu goes up like this. So when you, what do you think you use to bring you back here? Um, so I, you eat kai. So when you do that, you rebalance. If you ate kai with your, with your tapu taonga, you then do this, and you start stripping all of the sacredness from this weapon, and it's no longer important. Fine, so we want to cherish all the tapu that's held inside of these taonga, so we don't eat with them, right? It's also to protect you, make sure that you're okay. Another one, so you don't step over it. These were always modeled after tipuna or ancestors who are no longer here. So you stepping over it is just disrespectful, right? Always when you see a tayaha, don't go and pick it up until you ask who it belongs to, because you have no idea where this has been and what this has done. So always ask, who does that tayaha belong to? Once you find the owner, Go and ask the owner to see if it's okay to pick up. If they say it's kapai, you're all good. Alright? It's just to protect you and keep you safe. So, tayaha. Tayaha. <laughs> That's the hardest one. You guys remember that one? <laughs> this year. Oh, cheer. Right. This one's just made of wood. So it's not a meripoinamu. It's just painted green. All right. But yes, this is what it's supposed to depict. A meripoinamu. Right. Or a patu. Patu means to hit. Right. A patu has three ate. Tahi, ua, Toru, so three blades, right? Mainly the fighters who had these were all 
expert fighters. You only got a mere ponamu or a patu or a patu if you are an expert fighter. So once you upgraded from this and you were proficient in using a taiaha, you then moved on to use one of these. Our tipuna were very honourable fighters. They never fought in the back. They always fought head on. If someone had to pull this out to fight you, that meant that they acknowledged your ability as a as a warrior, and it meant they needed more skill to take you out. So it was their way of showing respect to you as a fighter. Aye, aye, very good. You did? Did you have a question? Ah, okay, good point. Yeah. So, yes, patu is used to hit. This one is made of wood, but yes, it's supposed to depict the mere ponamu. When you have a patu that's made of green stone, oh yeah, it changes the name and it's called a mere. Alright? This one here is another form of patu, but it's called a wahaika. 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 Oh boy. You, can, you know a wahaika because it has this little notch over here. What do you think that's used for? Catching. Alright, it's used to catch the other weapon. Look in there. This arm. See you later. Right, <laughs> wahaika. This one here. Tefa tefa. Tefa tefa. Tefa tefa. Tefa tefa. Now our rangatira were usually the only ones who held tefa tefa. Right, the chiefs of the of the Taiwa party. It's not really used for fighting. Some of them are designed to do so, but they're mostly used for direction. So you would usually have your rangatira, who would be standing in an area where he could be seen, and he would be directing the Taiwa party where to go, because he could see the battle. So if I went like this, what does that mean? What if I said that? Yeah. And that way, yeah. and if I do this, yeah. it's the same. Let's go, because we're losing, so we've got to go. Alright, so, tefa tefa. Alright, here we go. Tifaya. All together. Tutatara. What's mouth? What's fish? One of the other things too about our about our mofafai, as you see they have some of them have strings, this one's missing its feathers. But they all have feathers on them. Most of the time the, we didn't dress our rako. If it was dressed, it was only meant for status. So for someone important. So if a rangatira turned up and he had a he had a kaiaha that was dressed, it meant he was pretty important. Same thing with our tefa tefa. Usually in battle, if you had to, they were used as a way of distraction. So if I was fighting you, I would make sure to flicker the feathers all the time. And as soon as I see your eyes move, <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. So our, our 
Taonga, this one here, right, not all of the time they were used for battle. So again, they were used for status symbols in some cases to show that there's a person of importance in this party or in this toa. So that was that was what they were used for. Sometimes too, these were used as offerings or as gifts of peace. Because if you have here, you've got one face here and another one there. Right? Tuma Tauinga and Rongo are brothers. And they balance one another out. So you can't have one without the other. Right? Tu ma tauinga, rongo. Rongo, tu ma tauinga. Right? Because in terms of peace, you have the peace part, which is to look after. Right? You have to go out and do something not so well, which is battle, but you're doing that in order to protect the ones that you that you love and you care about. So that's the balance between one piece. This part here, yes. If you can see, it's a bit dirty. That's just because it's been in the ground. All right? That's okay. Because just usually a lot of um, a lot of people who practice modako, the fire goes in the ground, low end, just so it can, can kind of stay there. Sometimes I put it there when I go out and do my, my whittle, I'll usually put a taiaha there just as, a, as another guide. Because remember, all of these are, are tipuna and ancestors. So if I put one out there, that means I've got an ancestor out there who's just looking out for me too. Why? Um, is it sticking that side in the ground? No, no. This side's okay to go in the ground. Just remember, Arirul doesn't. Did you like lie it down on the side? Yep, yep, it can be lying put on the ground. But what was one of the rules? That's not right. Don't step over it. If you can't step over it, can you just go around it? Yep. <laughs> That's the whole point. <laughs> Any other part type? Any other questions? These ones are from chickens. 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 These are hey hey feathers. <laughs> Back in the day, our tipuna used to use native birds. So kiwi, we had a lot of kiwi feathers, a lot of kaka feathers. All of the birds that were plentiful in, in our areas, those were the ones we would use. Sometimes you would use horse hair. And what do you think the other thing was we used to use? Yeah. Human hair. <laughs> yeah. So just one thing here, put your hands down. One thing about our hair, in Te Ao Māori, our hair is important. It's very, very sacred. So sometimes you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of kids will have really, really long hair, and that's because there's a tikanga around that. Sometimes you don't cut your hair uh, until one of your one of your kuia or one of your kroa would pass away, and then you would cut your hair, and it would go it would go with them. Right? I don't know the full tikanga around it, but our hair is very, very tapu. So when you would put that on on your rako, it was kind of a way to almost disrespect but show that you're you're not to be messed with because you've got real hair on here which meant who did you take out to dress your rako like that or huru huru awe is another word as well but rau. i'll go grab it eh can be wrong. Most of the time though, they're not dressed. If they're used for battle, sometimes they're not they're not dressed. Alright? But yeah. Have I used this one? Yes. Not really, he's a bit too heavy for me. Alright, so as a kaifa kairo or or carver, if you are making one of these for someone, you'd need all of their measurements. How tall they are, if they 
what how their hands work because this one has a different tinana or a different kapo. It's an oval. Yeah, try feel that. It's an oval. And that one is a circle. Can you feel the difference? Oh, yeah. Yeah, be careful, be careful. So one thing, hui hui, one thing about our tipuna is that we were very resourceful. We only used what we had around us. And because all of the native foods was all that we had, we dress our rako, and that's all we used. Now time, we don't use our native foods, but there's a lot of these around. So when a chicken is no longer needed, and we take the feathers. <laughs> because if you think about it, now we give the chicken its life again. Because where would they go? Where, where would they go? Where would they go? They go back to Papatunaku, but we then give it life. See, now we bring it back to life. Have you ever seen someone like you? No, no, thank, thank, thankfully I haven't, but I've heard it's been done before. It only turns up if you've got a really bad daru with, or some, a real, real bad issue with the, with the money. Are there things small? No. Okay. They're all treated. Well, what would you think? Would you think Jimmy Cody or what would you think? Usually, uh, the ake ake is it the wood, or well, maire is the best. Maire is what these ones are, these wahaika are made of. Black or white maire, because it's real dense and real hard. Yeah, we wouldn't necessarily use totara for our, our mofafai, because it's quite soft. So we use that also for these, for our taonga puoro. Yeah, because it's just got a, it's got a, a gentle nature to it as well. So it makes sense that we use that for our, for our taonga puoro instead. Not these ones, but there is one inside of our taonga pool or our, our whare taonga. It's real old, that one you can use for that. Is that how old is it? How old are these ones? They're all pretty new. They're all pretty young. Um, for example, the carver who did our, our two kukaya, He's the one who carved our tefa tefa and our wahika. So he did all of them. So they're all about the same age. We got them five years ago. So they're not that old. Yep. Yep. One of these. Depends on the artist, and it depends how how they're feeling. Right? When it comes to Fakairo, a lot of the mahi that we do in Te Ao Māori is all based on Māori or energy. Right? So if the Fakairo artist isn't feeling too well, then they might not they might not carve something until later because they don't want any of that Māori to seep into their work because then that gets handed on to someone else. If you put bad feelings into this and then give that to someone else, you're then giving your bad feelings to them. You don't want to do that. Right? So you always carve when you're in the right state of mind. So it could take anywhere from a week to a year. All based on feel. Unless you've got a deadline and then you've got to do it better. <laughs> This part here, that's just to do with the stain of the wood. Yeah. Yeah, they sure did. Hmm. Maybe a few months. A few months. 
Did we make these? No, we commissioned someone. So we got someone else to make these who are more, more expert at creating, creating Do you guys still have water? No, huh. not anymore. I still fight with my cousins, but that's. <laughs> 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 Oh. Yes, I've got two. Older, older sister, younger brother. Yes. <laughs> what do you with your sister in your mouth? What's that? Do you argue with your brother's sister's what? Your cousin's with your fist or your mouth? We usually just argue. <laughs> <laughs> But then auntie or, or Puru will come in and just, yeah, just tell us to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You can come up and have a have a touch if you want. Just so pick them up. Put them on. I'll show you how it's Thank you.